Hi, this is Mike Ruane from Revelation Software, and in this video we'd like to talk to you about the ARIF32 conversion wizard. Released in version 8.0, the wizard is a tool that is intended to let the user migrate their 16-bit applications to a 32-bit ARIF32 application. There are three main reasons for doing this. One is that there's no longer a 64K limit in the ARIF32 world. Second, ARIF32 runs much better with Windows memory rather than trying to find expanded memory for the regular ARIF applications. And third, ARIF32 works much better with modern hardware such as USB printers. Now, to use the application, we basically go to the system monitor, run the wizard, walk through, filling in the blanks, and then finally have our application and test run it. Now, for this demonstration, I've created a new application called Sample. And I did this by logging into the sysprog application of Open Insight and going File, New Application, and just filling in the blanks as needed. Once we're into the application, that we're going to convert into. I'm going to go to Tools, Advanced, System Monitor, and choose from the System Monitor. I'm actually going to run my command. To run a window in Open Insight, we use the exec command. So I'm going to type in exec, and then the name of the conversion wizard, which is the ARF32 underscore conversion underscore wizard. And I'll press return. And we'll see here, and I'll slide this up into frame, the ARF32 conversion wizard. The wizard will take a step by step prompting us for the information that it needs to let us convert our application from ARIF to ARIF32. We'll click on the next button to begin. First, we're prompted for the name of the Open Insight account that we're going to convert into. It's defaulting to the application that we just opened, so it'll be sample. I'll press the Tab key, and we'll see that it's prompting us now for the name of the existing ARIF application. It's also defaulting to sample, and this is a good thing because I am in fact converting the sample ARIF application. However, we could put in a name like Fred or Bob or Customer, whatever your ARIF application was, and convert it to a different name for Open Insight. We're pretty happy with this information. We'll click on the Next button. Now we're prompted for the location of the system or sysenv table inside the ARIF application. This is usually where the ARIF.exe lives. So I'm going to click on the Browse button, and you'll see that I get prompted for the ability to browse through the whole computer and find the files. I'm going to cancel out of here because I happen to know that at C colon backslash ARev31 is where my system file is located. I'll click on the next button. Okay, now I'm prompted for the locations of where the existing data is and where I want the new data to go. So the from locations, I could again double click or I could just type in C colon backslash ARev31 backslash sample. And the two locations are where I want the data to be copied and I'll just create a default subdirectory called sample. I could have as many as I want and the system will scroll for me automatically, this little edit box. So I'll click on the next button and I'm prompted by the system that the fact the sample does not exist. Do I wish to create it? And I will say yes I do. Now I'm prompted for a series of four questions where I have to decide yes or no whether or not I want to do something. First, if I've copied the data, do I wish to rebuild the indexes? And in all cases this is a good idea. The indexes should be rebuilt in Open Insight. However, one caveat is that relational indexes are not copied over and will not be rebuilt. So they will need to be added manually. Clicking on the next button brings up the question, do I wish to change the dots to underscores in my dictionary field names? This is a good practice for Open Insight. It was a good practice for ARF3. You should do it, but if you don't, don't worry about it. We believe that we've added enough backwards compatibility and filters behind the scenes that it should handle it for you. However, we recommend that you do, in fact, change your dots to underscores. I'll click on the next button again. Now I'm prompted, do I wish to recompile all the programs? The binary object code used by ARIF and Open Insight is different. So we will need to recompile all of your programs that are in your ARIF application. So yes, I do want to recompile all these programs. I'll click on next. And finally, do I wish the tables to be copied? That is, do I want to modify the tables where they live now, or do I want to move them to a new, copy them rather, to a new location, and then make the changes there? Well, I want to copy them, so I'm going to say yes, I wish to copy them, and then I click on next. Okay, there's the finish line. We click on the finish button, and we'll see that we have the ARIF32 conversion screen here. Now this screen we can actually call directly, just as before we went to the system monitor and we called the ARIF32 conversion wizard. We can actually call up this screen, which is called ARIF to ARIF32. But you'll see that the top half of the screen is filled in with information that we entered in the wizard. The, f the application name, the one we're converting, the location of the SysENV table, the responses to our questions, and the data tables. Now if I wanted to use this wizard over and over again, rather than going back and filling out the information every single time, 
I can save it and then load it at a future time. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to move the screen down a little bit so we can see the status line down here. I'm going to click on the Convert App button. So I click on the Convert App button. As you can see from the status line here, the tables are being copied, the dictionaries are being processed, information is being moved back and forth, and when we're all set, when all is said and done in about a second or so, we will have all the data moved from the one place where it originally existed in AREV to the new location, in our case, sample. That's all done, and you can see that now files have appeared, or a single file have appeared in the file list here. If I highlight one of the files, or multiple files, these are the program files that were determined by the conversion wizard going through the VOC or VOC file and finding anything that was cataloged. So you'll see we have something in sample BP. I will click on the recompile button. You'll see that it's recompiling down there. That status line. Okay, the recompilation is done and it's given us a status list. So we'll click on the OK button here. And a report is generated. I'll slide it into view here where we can see that in the sample BP, there are seven programs no specific errors during compilation but if I scroll over you'll see that we had there were some bad records and maybe it didn't compile that there was no VOC entry so there were some issues we'll take a look at that once we actually get into our error of application that's going to be beyond the scope of this simple introductory video however we will close down this wizard now this uh, report and we'll also close down our wizard I'll close that and we'll scroll up just a little bit. Now before I actually try to launch my AREV32 application I want to make sure that all of my tables were attached and in fact they probably were not so I'm going to attach them manually. So by choosing the database manager which can be found either by going the database manager on the side or tools uh, database manager you'll see that we get a list of all the tables that are currently attached and this list may be different from what you have on your list. But I'm going to go to file I'm going to go to add a table and the location this is where I have a hard-coded path but in my two locations I just had the word sample so I'll just type in the word sample here over here we have a, uh, a browse button but I don't need that because I know it's sample I'll press enter here it says all the tables in this directory are currently attached because I have attached them previously yours may not be so once you've assured yourself that they are in fact attached I'll close this down I'll close down the database manager as well. What we want to do now is try to launch the error of 32 standalone form. So I'll go Tools, Advanced. Oh, the System Monitor is open somewhere. Let's find it. Tools, Advanced, System Monitor. I'm going to convert the error of exec, rather, the error of 32 standalone underscore form. I'll press and this right now is trying to launch the error 32 file. I'm getting some errors about my VOC file, so we'll take a look at those in the second part of this video. But for the first part of the video, what we want to do, I'm going to shut down this window, is that we want to recall that we create the application that we want to convert into. That once we get here, we want to go to the system monitor, and we want to type in exec arev32 underscore conversion underscore wizard. Fill in the blanks throughout the wizard. We'll save it at the end. We go to the database manager, make sure the file is attached, and then we try to launch the AREV32 standalone form. So that's it for part one of this video, the use of the AREV32 conversion wizard. In part two, we'll actually go into what errors did I encounter, how can I fix them, and how can we make this conversion really work. Thanks for your attention, and we'll see you soon.